I did this interview years ago with Isaac Hayes, the great musician, mm -hmm. and he was surprised how much some tattooed punk rock guy knew about his work. And I said, you know, Mr. Hayes, I, I, I've been listening to you since I was in fifth grade. But I sat with him for the better part of a night. Yeah. And I said, well, you know, I put out a record. You can do with it what you want. He said, but young people listen to you. you got to find a way to be responsible for that. If you're slinging the hash, make sure the hash has good ingredients. Absolutely. And, put and some I, love in there. Yeah, and I really took that to heart. And this is like 1990-something. And I was like, thank you for that. Because, you know, he's a wise guy. You know, he, he's seen quite a few things go down. You know, I was making records when CDs came out, and I loved the extra space. Because coming from punk rock, you want to give everything to your fans. Right. We crammed it as full as we could so you get a big bang for your buck. But when you sit and listen to those, it's a, it's work. And a lot of youth bands I listen to, you know, they do those 25, 31-minute records. I'm like, thank you. Because mm -hmm. it's effervescent, it's wild, it draws you in, shakes you up, and it turns you loose. Right. And you're good to go. You are a renaissance man. You've done so many different things. How have you adjusted to to how people receive information today. It took me a while. I felt very old and semi curmudgeonly with, with social media. So Heidi, who runs my, my office and runs my life, she says, okay, you're gonna start tweeting. I'm like, oh, really? And I just am very utilitarian with all of that, and that some people tweet every eight seconds. I'm in line at this thing and it sucks. I'm like, ah, thanks. <laughs> so I try and not be burdensome. I don't want to read it, so I can't do it to others. But I like the idea of a message that can go out very quickly and very efficiently. You see it all the time, from flash mobbing to tweeting, all of that. It levels the playing field. Absolutely. It lets the Constitution really get some breathing room. And yeah. so I use it as a 52-year-old man <laughs> approaches it. It's not a big part of my life. Since I turned 50, I've been doing a lot more dealing with myself than I have before. One thing I got right is I listened to advice from my friend Heidi. I've met a lot of people, as you have, as we do in this business. She's one of the most amazing single human beings I've ever met. She has all your touring you do, that's escapist. You do this because you can't hack it. She goes, I dare you to get off the road for a year and live in this house. <laughs> God damn! And I was like, wow. She let you have it. Oh, man. And, and, and I said, no, she said, because you can't face it, can you? She said, you never deal with yourself, do you? That's why you do all of this stuff, you know, your radio show, the, all these things you say yes to to get away from yourself. I was like, busted. You suck. <laughs> she, she sinks my battleship consistently. She said, I want you to stay off the road and let's just sit still and see what happens. I fought my reptilian brain that says, get on a tour bus and book 500 shows. That you can do. I was like, okay, Heidi. I'm listening and I'm gonna do it your way and it's been really hard. It makes me nervous in a good way, like, wow, I, mean, I haven't done this really. What's it gonna be? I feel the same way, you know, uh, I had to step away from the canvas for a while to really understand what a gift it is to have this kind of life, you know, yep. that's, not everybody gets this and, and not everybody even who gets it can do it for so long. You've had a long career. That's where the first Black Flag album was recorded. Really? This is where I landed when I came to LA. I was living in an office space that is now Trader Joe's. This was where I would walk and I would try and get the guts to shoplift from the, I think it's a Mayfair market up here. Uh huh. Because I was used to working every day. Go to the ice cream store, scoop the ice cream, get your 375 an hour. I came out here, I said, so, you know, my fellow bandmates, what are we having for lunch? And they said, whatever you're going to steal. I'm like, <laughs> I, like, we don't have any money? Like, are you kidding? We're Black Flag. We have no money. And I'm trying to get the guts to grab a, a chunk of Monterey Jack cheese, thinking it's it's the cheapest cheese there is. They won't be so mad that I'm stealing the cheap stuff. Like, what am I doing? Because it's just not me to steal. But that was going to be lunch. And I always chickened out. But that was my walk of, of dread. Like, okay, I'm going to steal. And I could never do it. Yikes. So I'd always walk the other way to what's now, uh, I guess, Gardner and Santa Monica, which is now Fat Burger and the other burger right, place. Right, right, right. The right. Fat Burger was a place called Okie Dogs. It's a punk rock hangout. And uh, all the punk rockers would go there. It's just like cheap food. There you go. I was going to eat that. That's it. I, I heard it. Okay. And don't, don't forget, forget to subscribe to WOW Presents. Presents.